Why can't Apple just be honest? They just launched iPad OS 26 at WWDC and this shocked everybody, even if you don't own an iPad or use it as a computer-like device. Even in our own videos, you guys are most interested with these iPad videos to see what you guys can get with the software update. Now, I'll let you guys know when you guys can get it for yourself, the earliest beta, but I wanna cover Apple being sneaky and just a little bit weird. The full update is incredible, and even in the beta stage, it has been working really well. We're gonna do an update, uh, like a two week video, showing you guys what still needs some work, so make sure you guys subscribe for that. But seeing this software and this level of multitasking working so well, even on the cheapest iPad, just blows my mind. And you would think, yes, there's you know a little bit of differences, you have some windowed modes, simple software things, how can that make this such a big deal? Well, it is because it just makes your iPad so much more usable, especially for those that want to use your iPad as an all-in-one device. Even simple things like being able to have more detail in list view and small little fixes, it's just so nice to have and brings a lot more capability, especially if you're gonna connect it to an external display. I mean, it makes your iPad a powerhouse. And for years, Apple has not wanted to to do that. They had excuse after excuse mentioning why you can't do that. Very simple little changes even when they're launching these incredible iPads like when they put the M1 chip and Tim Cook went from the ceiling, dropped down, put it in and we were expecting a month later to have incredible software updates that just never came. And now Craig Federighi even though we really like him, did an interview talking about a bunch of stuff, but talking about iPad and why they waited and certain things, and it just does not make sense. Now, I have mentioned that uh, Apple has really shifted over the last year because with some sales slowing down and people not upgrading like they used to, they need to get people to spend more money. And that was the only thing that would change Apple change the way they've been doing stuff, change that ladder of upgrades, and finally get people people a better value. It's up to you and I to stop buying these products when they just simply aren't worth it or they are too limited. For example, the MacBook Air finally got 16 gigabytes of RAM base, and that made a huge difference in terms of the experience people get with the chips getting faster year over year. The RAM is more of a limitation. We cover that with the M2 and all the weird things Apple did. And finally, we have an amazing device and that cheap basic iPad coming with more storage is incredible because they always used to limit us with a base one or you spend a ton of money to get a lot more storage and then you might as well get an iPad Air. So now Apple is finally changing what they're doing, but Craig at the same time is saying there are certain reasons for it. So for example, figuring out what the right multitasking experience is for the device and the ways it makes it unique, it took very careful exploration and that's how he began. And you know, we've had iPads for so long and so much artificial limitations for such a long time. When Stage Manager came out in 2022, they felt that it's been long enough that people have gotten used to it, developers have been got used to it, and they could add a little bit more flexibility to people um, for those that actually wanted it. And that is interesting to say because when it came out, they presented it as this major breakthrough, this huge thing that you can finally do it on an external display as well. When in reality, it just wasn't that great. And the limitations that they put on the software, you have to have an M chip in there or else you're just not gonna get it because the previous, one, previous ones are just not powerful enough. It can't handle that level of multitasking. Well, look at now where you have a basic cheap iPad, they dropped the price down and it is running incredibly well in Vadim's long-term review. So fast, so smooth, you have four windows open, uh, you can bunch them together and then pull them back up. I mean, there was no limitation. If you had an iPad Pro with a powerful chip that was an M chip, I don't know. They had to kind of, they're going back on that part of it. 
With iPad 26, they added the menu bar into it, and that is great because you can have um, a lot of different options in there for the high-end user to be able to access and doesn't have to clutter up the, you know, the UI or even worse, certain functions just don't get put in because there's not a way for it. And the weird thing is, uh, Craig said that if iPad had a menu bar from the beginning like Mac, app developers would naturally say, you know, let's just put it in there instead of thinking of other ways to be able to do certain things. I'll have the full text right there on the screen. I won't read all of it. He said they didn't want to take something old off the shelf and put it into the iPad. Uh, but what ended up happening is, well, now they're taking older things, a regular cursor, regular menu bar, putting it in because it just works and it will work so well. And so many people are happy now. And now we're getting to this other point of merging Mac OS with iPad OS. It's getting closer, it's getting closer, but will that ever happen? Well, I don't think they will go that far. They're still putting limitations in and there's a good reason for it. And some of the people commenting, well, it makes sense. They never want to get rid of that 30% that they make on the App Store. There have been lawsuits over this. They've been forced to do certain things. But if you think about it on a Mac, you download you know, the DMG, you uh, set something up, you sign up online, they're not getting that cut. And if you look at it, Apple services are growing year over year. This past quarter, double digit growth. That's money they're making partially from the App Store and all of this reoccurring um, you know, revenue coming in. And so if you could install, say, Final Cut Pro on here, like you have on your Mac, they're not making cuts from that. You gotta pay five bucks a month, to get the Final Cut Pro and it's not as good. So that is kind of the final limitation. And you know, there's some other minor things where, you know, they're gonna give us just enough to, to get you to wanna upgrade, um, but not the full thing. Now, Craig also mentioned this whole spork um, kind of example where they don't wanna make iPad a spork. You have a fork, you gotta have a spoon and you put it together. It's not as good as either one, but the iPad is a kind of a spork device, right? You have a simple iPhone-like interface and then you have the Mac and this can kind of do it all. So I don't know how it isn't a spork. They don't wanna make it a spork. I think it's a killer spork, a really killer one with amazing hardware, especially on the iPad Pros. I honestly think that they could just say, hey, the people wanted it. We're adding these features in. You know, the hardware is great for it, it's ready. Instead of trying to make excuses why they haven't done it. But with all that said, thankfully, we have iPadOS 26. We're using it, it's working out well. There's some other things we wanna talk about. I know for you guys, if you wanna download the beta, if you don't wanna wait for the official launch, it's gonna be beginning to middle of July. And surprisingly, unlike on the iPhone, where we have so much glitches with the beta iOS, on the iPad, it is very solid. Um, which means they didn't have to make that much whole changes, the hardware was capable. But you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Uh, does Apple just not wanna admit all the limitations that they have put in? You guys can go and check out the full article as well. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.